Welcome everyone. We're so excited to have you back again on Timeless Talk, where we talk about everything amazing in the creative industry. We meet different people and today I'm excited to introduce two amazing ladies. Um, I'm actually in awe of them. I don't even know how I get to sit at this table with them because um, I'll let them introduce themselves. I don't want to say too much, but Irene and Esteri, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Karen. And please introduce yourselves. I think we'll start with <laughs> <laughs> Esteri. Um, thank you so much, Karen, for having me here today. My name is Esteri Tevandeke. I am a storyteller. Okay. I am a, an actor. I am a writer, director producer and hopefully going into distribution of content. I stumbled upon acting in 2008. I, I used to be a contemporary dancer and ballroom dancer at the National Theater. Mm -hmm. And I heard about this uh, audition for a short film by Maisha that was a project that was run by Mira Nair. That's yeah. the director of Queen yes. of Katwe. So it's like full circle later yes. in the future. So I just went into this audition and got cast to play lead. Wow. That was the first ever role I played for um, Sins of the Parents by Judith Adong. That was a short film that was being produced by Maisha. And that's how I become an actor. And 15 years later, I am still doing Going strong, yes. right? Yes. Wow, yes. that's amazing. Yeah. And Irene, I met you when I was 13. <laughs> And I just used to go like, if only I could be like, oh, oh my goodness. I absolutely, to this day, mm -hmm. admire you. Thank you. You're, you're talented, you're gorgeous. Thank you. And I'm just in awe. Please tell us more about yourself. Okay, Irene, my name is Irene Kulabako. I'm an actor, I direct. Um, I started in theater on stage, but later on did it towards film and television. Um, what, 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 what? I started, how did I start in theater or acting? I didn't know I was acting, but I used to enjoy mimicking mm. teachers in class yes. when they were not present, of course. Yeah. And then mimicking parents, relatives, and all that stuff. Yeah. So later on, I, I was taken up, I, st I studied acting mm. at McGill University in the music, yeah. dance, and drama department, which I think is called performing arts. Yes, and like that yes. Place. Yes, so... That, that was my journey, and um, I think the play you watched, yes, saw me, Hands of My People, Hands of my people which was written by Charles Newport. Yes. And it was about uh, female genital Yes, it was so yeah. <sighs> heartbreaking. Yeah, and I played the little girl. Oh, was yes. it was and on top of being mutilated, she was being forced to marry another man. Yes. Michael, you seen Teenage oh. man. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I know. Oh. Terrible. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's so amazing to have you both here. And the story, there's something I've been dying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dying to say. Of course, seeing you here is really amazing because a couple of years, you know, the past couple of years, you were not well. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are very many people who are seeing you right now and wondering how you're doing. Many people were asking, did she come back from India? <laughs> you know, there are people who participated. I'm sure so many people participated in the campaign to help you get, yes. you know, get better and they're wondering how you're doing. Yeah. And I remember the tip of the iceberg was at the UCC Film Awards when Patrick Nkakalkani said, we want more, we want more, and Esther is not well. He was so, you know, right. passionate about it. So, yeah. Esther, tell us, how yeah. are you? Did you come back from India? What happened? Yeah, yeah. I am so well, you guys. Mm -hmm. I am so well. Uh, we came back last year in January. Mm -hmm. We were in India in 2022. Mm -hmm. I had my surgery on 19th of November 2022. Mm -hmm. I had a kidney transplant. Yeah. And my husband was gracious enough to donate one of his kidneys. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I am well. Mm -hmm. I have been loved, you guys. I have been loved. Everyone just jumped onto the train of Save Esteri yes. from here to Cameroon to Sierra Leone to Ghana to Nigeria to the UK it flowed Sam and I we could not believe I get very emotional every yes. time I talk about it it's yes. a very it's very it's still very fresh in our minds but we are grateful yeah. I, I just keep saying gratitude 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 yes. that I am alive and that I was reminded that people see me yeah. people see us people are really kind like yes. people are really kind and they held their hands through it and 
we are here. We are so grateful, so grateful for everyone that contributed in prayer, in calls, in texts, in 1,000 shillings. We did 1,000 shillings of fundraisers. We did 5,000 yes. and people were donating from yeah. everywhere. So yeah, I'm back here to tell stories because people allowed that and God was so gracious. And oh. Sam, that man, mm. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. We're just so happy to have you here. <laughs> We're happy that the industry has a beautiful success story and Thank testimony you so much. through you. Thank we you thank so God much. for that. Thank you so much. Um, ladies, we just, uh, as we celebrate Women's Month, we just want to know and, you know, inspire and encourage the young actresses out there, but not just actresses, but ladies who want to step into this creative world. You've been blessed and lucky to actually succeed at being actresses and there's now a generational thing i mean we saw you irene as we were growing up acting and you know just growing in this and now there's this generation and i know there's a younger generation esther and, and i share a generation so there's like we were talking about crop tops <laughs> and, <laughs> and the fact that we we are like why are we hiding our stuff when we see how the young people are rocking them but that aside let's get back to what we are talking about so uh we ju i just want to hear from both of you how you got into acting mm -hmm. yes okay I'll, I'll start i got into acting I didn't know it was acting, okay. but I used to mimic my teachers okay. in class. And, you know, if you had a strong accent in X, Y, Z, if you had a, uh, an interesting mannerism, either the way they walked or whatever, I would do it in class. And, I mean, of course, not without the chair, no. And, <laughs> and it would make, you know, it would make kids laugh and whatever. So I, I just used to do it. I didn't, had no clue that was acting. And I continued doing that whole mimic. I was a bit, not a bit. I was a stubborn, <laughs> a stubborn student. Um, so I, I just used to find fun in everything. I would mimic an uncle and mimic my father, mimic, you know. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that was acting until I got, I think, in university. And that's when I was given, because I didn't choose it. Okay. By the day, but in those days, it was called MDD, Music Dance and Drama. It wasn't my choice, but um, at school, I went to Namasadai College. Father Grimes mm -hmm. had spotted that. Mm -hmm. And he put on my forms, those career forms of university, whatever. I put law. <laughs> okay. I'm doing geography. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't get any guidance on that, so I had the wrong subjects. And last but not least, I put music, dance, and drama. So I think they saw the crisis there, and one way or another shifted and gave me that university um, and then that's when like I really studied what acting is and mm. you know, theater and all that stuff but I just I think I you call it play I just used to play and have fun and did you grow to love it or did you feel like it's something you had to do because you had not gotten the opportunity to do what you actually wanted to do it's the best thing that has ever happened to me wow. um, spiritually I think God knew that was my direction. Yeah. But I, I wanted something completely opposite. How can you want, how can you even think of uh, want, uh, being a pilot when you're doing literature and geography? Mm. And, you know, yes. you didn't get guidance. So no. I was going on in the wrong direction. And yet, yeah, I, so I don't have any regrets whatsoever. Sometimes what we think is rejection is actually redirection to what we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. Absolutely. And you inspired young girls like me. <laughs> and just looking back, I don't know how many, I don't want to tell you how old I am, mm -hmm. but how many years ago and we're here, it's, mm -hmm. it's amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. And Esther, how you said you are an accidental yeah. actor. Yeah. You were dancing and then you stumbled on this role and mm -hmm. you became an actress. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like that is what you are called to do? Do you feel like you are led? to what you were truly meant to be doing? I think for me, it's a, I wouldn't say acting is what I was called to do. I feel like telling stories is what I was called to do. So I studied industrial and fine art at the university, just like Irene, That's it was- I'd wanted. <laughs> <laughs> and I had wanted MDD. Are you serious? Yes, but- Did you see me? Yes, uh, yes. Wow. But, yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, my story is that my dad wanted something else, like all parents. They mm -hmm. want you to be a lawyer, an engineer. And, but I, I was a bit confused because he always supported my art. Mm -hmm. He always supported my molding of small things, drawing, being part of new visions, paint this as kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. He always supported that. But when I said I wanted to do art or MDD, he closed up. So I didn't understand what that was. So I put all the courses that he wanted, then put uh, art as my fifth choice, and then MDD. So um, I somehow got lucky that I got a government sponsorship to study at the university. And by then, he wasn't working and he was ill. So that was, he was just like, OK, yes. go do it, because I don't have to pay for it. So that's yes. where my blessing came. So I've always felt like I am a storyteller even as a uh, visual artist, as a dancer, as an actor, writer, producer, distributor, director. I just always feel like I'm very fascinated by story from every angle, from everyone. I'm very fascinated by people. So I don't think it's acting that is, I feel, is my purpose. It's just to tell stories. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful yeah. way of looking at it. So no matter what you're doing. By the way, Esther makes the most amazing earrings. <laughs> I forgot to ask her to bring us some pairs. That's yeah. what we should I'm have I'm wearing today. some I'm pairs. I'm staring at them. I yeah. Them. <laughs> and then it's a green affair. Yes. So you have carried us some green earrings. <laughs> Next time we'll make sure. So you are a storyteller. Yes. And you feel like you are directed into your purpose by this rejection which wound up being a redirection. Mm. What are some of the roles that have stuck with you and has it been stage or film? Because we're focusing on theater, but I realize that both of you have experienced both ways. Has it, do you prefer theater or film? And what has been your best role, your most favorite and memorable role? Okay, interesting. You're asking tough questions. Mm, <laughs> mm. Let's see. My favorite role, I think, for stage, Theatre would be Hands of My People. My favorite. Oh, that was oh, yeah, it was very that's moving. Great. Yes. Very it, moving. It, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, um, that's for stage for film. I like Mrs. Chimbalik in the mm. Queen of Country. Mm. It was a very short role. You, you're both I, stars in the Queen of Country. <laughs> people, we have Disney stars here. People who have been ahead to Hollywood a bit. In, oh, wow. So, yeah. But I, I, I can't say I prefer one to the other. I miss theatre. I haven't done that in years. Um, yeah, I miss it. I, I, miss, I miss the stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a producer, wink, wink, I might have a role for you coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your favorite, Esther? Um, I did a film in 2017 called Imperial Blue. It was a film that was directed by a first-time British director. I found him, I think, just um, the way he gave himself to this directing and how he, he helped me see myself I had never experienced before. I find that that role stays with me. It stayed with me for all these years. And we shot it in Fort Porto, in the village, mm. in the hills. We had to carry our own generator. We had to mm. dig our own latrine. Like when wherever we traveled the set, we had to get a guy that was digging the latrines. It was the whole experience of making that film that just stays with me and humbles me. Like what it takes to make film or to make art or to tell stories and what people go through to bring these stories to your screens or to, you know. Um, also for stage, I think uh, I will say um, Maria Chizito. There's a story about the genocide mm -hmm. in, in Rwanda and I play the nun that was one of the ones that orchestrated this genocide mm -hmm. that were really killing the people and I play wow. the nun. So we took this, this, we took this play to, we showed it here in Uganda then took it to New Orleans, then took it to Off-Broadway, New York, and how people receive this play and how it stays in your system. Like, you cannot believe that the place that people think is the solace or place to hide mm -hmm. was a place that was taking people and handing them over to these people that mm -hmm. were killing them. So even this play, for me, stays with me and the character that I played, because I had to sing mm -hmm. on stage, I had to act, I had to, like, I was dressed in a habit. It was the whole experience. So I find that some of those roles stay with me. 
Um, yeah. Do you consider yourself a method actor or have you grown to understand that acting is truly being and when you understand that, do you easily snap out of it? I don't snap out of it. I stay with characters and they affect me for months after that. I Even years. Same thing with Maria Chizito. I can't believe how one human being believed within themselves, within their soul, that God asked them to kill these people, to cleanse the earth. So those characters stay with me. Uh, still, I play Imperial Blue. I play this girl who is a daughter of a witch doctor that is fighting the church that's trying to take. So it looks like religion just keeps re re reoccurring in my life. So mm -hmm. um, because I am a Christian, it feels like it is something you, you, you wear. You never get, you never take these characters off. Every once in a while you take them off and then play another character, but they stay with you and they inform who you are as a person or who you are as a person also informs these characters, but you never really, never really get over this. And theatre over film. Okay. Any day. Okay. Any day. Film. Yes. Okay. Any day. Yeah. Irene, are there any roles that have stayed with you? There's one. Um, I, I played um, Mother Courage and Her Children. That's, that's a German um, playwright. Mm -hmm. Battle Brecht. And I played Yvette, the, the, the prostitute in there. Mm -hmm. um, it was an, a, an interesting challenging role for me because I was playing the opposite of who I am. I, okay. I, I don't really do the prostitution thing. I don't drink. And yet I had to act. I, don't, I can't sing. That's the other thing. Sadly, oh, really? I, I, God didn't give me that book. Like, you just talk, but singing, no. <laughs> so I had to sing. I had to, I had to act in Uganda. All the things that I'm uncomfortable with or not very comfortable with, I had to go through and do this with that play. And um, it, it went on, yeah, it, it, it did really, really well. But um, just what, what you suggested, like, for me it's different. I, I snap in and out of it. In the morning I'm in, out, afternoon I can be something else. So wow. I find it, yeah, I hadn't met someone like you who's, you know, whose character stay with you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. You said something about how it's hard for you to snap out of these roles and so you act once in a while. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Tell us about that particular experience you mm -hmm. mentioned. Yeah. I, 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 as an actor, find myself, I, I really dive into my characters and become them mm -hmm. or carry them around me, as in, with me. So I, I, after Queen of Katwe, I shot Queen of Katwe for... April to June. Um, after that, I had just been diagnosed with kidney disease, so I was already dealing with that situation. Mm -hmm. Then this amazing opportunity came. I was cast in this big role opposite David Oyelowo, yeah. opposite uh, Lupita. Yes. I played David's wife, and I spent most of my time in awe of this man. Like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, what? This is, you know. And then he's a Christian. Half the time we were praying together. He was just talking me through my own uh, medical situation and my fears and stuff. So after that film, I was depressed for eight months. Mm -hmm. I was dealing with a medical condition and then I was dealing with what is happening after this, what mm -hmm. happens after this. So I was mm -hmm. really in a hole and I contemplated suicide most of those eight months oh before the we premiered Queen of Katwe here. So when I came out to the premiere, that was the first time I was really coming out to the mm -hmm. world, but I had been in a ditch, in a, I, like, I don't know how to get out of it. For me, I struggle. So I, that's why most people ask, why don't you act all the time? How yes. come I don't see you on because TV? Because you're a star. <laughs> yes, you are a star. Thank you. But I really, really struggle. I don't know how people do TV. Mm -hmm. Like, I see Sanyu on telenovelas that are like, um, uh, a Three daily, years, four years. yes, and their Friday, daily is Monday yes. to Friday. I'm just like, how, how do you not just kill yourself after mm -hmm. that? Like, I don't understand it. So it's, I, I respect actors like that because I sometimes want to be like that. But I think uh, the person that I am can't take that kind of constant yeah. need of creativity. You, can, you have to keep pouring into something and into a character and it just takes so much from, wow. from me. Yeah. Wow. Irene, I know you veered off a bit from acting to doing 
other things. Do you think that helped? Would you have loved to be in a, a place where acting just, you know, paid well and quant and would that have been what you wanted to do all through and not having to go do something else? Yes. In our days, we, we went on stage because we loved it. Mm. Innocently, we never thought of the payments, the yes. fees, yeah. whatever. It was, yeah. it was a joy, it was fun. It was, you know, seeing audiences, the, you know, full houses and all that. In fact, I don't remember asking, how much am I going to be paid? Mm. Where is the money? Mm. It was, you know, it was that, which is, which is different now. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, that's one of the things um, I celebrate and, I, and, and I'm happy to hear that people have contracts, people are talking about, you know, yes. the auditions. For, mm -hmm. First one, there were no auditions. Like, <laughs> no, you want a what? A 20 year old. Okay, I know, I know one. I know one. Mm -hmm. It was that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we never thought of payment. Mm -hmm. As long as you were given a meal and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, or transport. We, we didn't think about that. We didn't think of it as a business. Mm. But right now, I look at you people now, I'm like, um, I'm smiling from one side to the other. I'm like, wow, this is good. This is what should have been the case. So, what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you would have preferred to just continue acting and not have to veer off into the yes. different things you yes. wound up doing after. Yes. And let me tell you what happened, why I, I made the shift. I don't remember who it was, but in those days, whenever an artist uh, passed on, they would be brought to the National Theatre. Mm. So there was a gentleman, he was, uh, they used to say we used to play music in the 60s, he was a big, I don't remember who he was, because mm. many years ago. But when they brought the guy, when they mentioned that he had passed on, then we started Harambe, started fundraising. Banange, mm. you can't get the guy from Mulago Hospital. Mm. Donate, 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 contribute, contribute. But now, now the car to get him from there. Whatever. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But now, do you know, it became, but now, now he's here. Contribute, and you know, it will be contribute. <laughs> they, 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 do you see? You have to know, you know, can you be serious as you say? <laughs> It's really Thank sad. You. I'm telling yeah. you. I'm yeah. sorry, it's sad, but it's the way she says it. It's the way you tell it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> then the guy is brought at the theater. Mm. Now, oh now, moving from the theater to the theater. And this one, not like my eyes or, you know, mm. it was. It, it was, was a real celebrating. It was real. And whether it was a wedding, it was the same. Banange, now the shoes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Mm. I can't be the struggling artist, the starving artist. I said I'm going to die a poor artist. Mm. That, that was it. Mm. I mean, that statement. And then from then on, the questions are, okay, now you're going to die a poor artist. What are you going to do? Mm. And that's when I steered away from, from theatre, got a full-time job, completely opposite, you know, NGO staff. And that's that's how I ended up in that direction. But it was I loved the craft, but it was like there's no money. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then that's when I started asking the question. Okay, I'm acting now. What about you know? Because at that time, because we overlapped it, it was your parents mm. giving you the transport. Mm -hmm. And then my mom would remind me, but now, now what is this acting? <laughs> you tell me. Mm. You tell me you're going to act. Where is the money? Yeah. Uh -huh. But now they're just acting. All my costumes are going. Actually, mm. it was like mm. yes. so fun that it was yes. in the in the theater, mm. in the <laughs> in the, <laughs> the actors, in the, actors. the you have everything. You have to bring your props. Yeah. You have to bring your costume. Yeah. You have to bring. You have to transport yourself there. You have to transport yourself. Out. So she's like, now, what what is this thing you're telling me you're mm. doing when uh, nothing is coming back? And sadly, it looks like it has changed. Mm. It has improved, but not that. much. Really? Mm -hmm. No, not that much. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the economy has even changed. Mm -hmm. So when you compare the days you're talking about and now, and what it takes to survive now mm -hmm. compared to then, mm -hmm. there's this whole big massive shift, you know? And so the story of an actor today, Esther, you, you testify, the story of an actor today is not too different. Oh, yes. No, it's mm -hmm. not too different from what oh. you're saying. Mm -hmm. And now we have to maybe examine that now that we're talking about celebrating women, we need to examine that in light of what it is to be a woman or a man mm -hmm. in this industry. Mm -hmm. um, 
As Terry, has it been different for you? Do you feel like it is different in theater? Has it been different for you because you are a woman and how? Hmm. Because of my gender? Yes. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, I feel that because I live in this time, mm -hmm. I am gold. I am a black woman. Mm -hmm. That means everyone is just... <gasps> <laughs> everyone, yes, everyone just wants a piece of a black artist or a black female artist. Um, however, I feel like in this economy, Uganda in particular, we run away from people who have attained a certain celebrity in film or in acting or in their craft. So um, I, I noticed that I don't get work, like someone actually calling me up and saying, yes, Terry, come, I have a job for you because they think that I, they can't afford me. Yeah. But uh, I'm not complaining about it because it has opened my eyes to making my own work, mm. which should then be what everyone does. Every yeah. artist should strive to tell their own stories. Mm. Me as a person, mm. I'm always cast as the sweet because you have such big cheeks. Oh, I'm oh just like, when am I going to be the prostitute? <laughs> like the song. Like, I would like to be a madame, you know? Because I think I can pull it off. But they're like, no, 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 no. You're the daughter of the reverend. Oh, my goodness. You're the wife of the da 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 da. Then I'm just like, okay, I'm the wife. Am I a wife that does something that affects the character. It's controversial. Yes. Oh, am yes. I the wife that's fixing the tie? Like, oh, wow, you look yes. nice, Which mommy. is what you were doing. In yes, the which, which was what I, yes. <laughs> so it, it becomes then, um, I have to question what kind of role they want to take mm. or what kind of character they want to write or what mm. kind of character they want to see on screen. So yes, it has changed just slightly from Irene's time. We get paid, mm. but how much? Mm. It's still not a big deal. Are you paid? Uh, is there a difference between what a male actor is paid and what you no, paid? No, for me, okay. I have not experienced that. I have not experienced a male actor being paid over, over. Which is a big fight in Hollywood. Yes, it's a big that. fight. Yeah. Even here in Uganda, especially for younger girls who want to be on screen, someone can see your hunger for screen and oh, for yeah. fame, and once they catch it. They can pay you anything. They will exploit you for. But if you know what your value is, of I know what my craft is, I know what my skill is. I've been doing film from 2008. Mm. That's what, 15 years? Mm. You cannot tell me what and who I can be or what I can possibly not be. I know what my value is. So when you walk into the room with that knowledge, you can command a certain amount of money. But even then, for me, I barely get paid because I choose, raw, I choose projects that, um, that I'm passionate about, so I don't care about the money. Again, okay. I go back to Irene's mm. statement. I don't care about the money. Just like I said, you called me up, and I was like, it's Karen. Mm. I don't care. Mm. Where are we going? Like, I, the people I work with or work for Mm. without questioning because I know that this adds to my CV. Yes. Every project that comes to me, I'm like, what could this possibly do for me? What could this possibly do for the next project I want to be in? You yes. know? So I have not experienced the gender disparity in, in, in payment, but it does exist. It exists, I've had it yes. from younger female actresses. Mm. So it okay. does exist, yeah. And Irene, have you experienced anything over the years, even when you were more active mm. was there any gender disparity whether it was in payment or how you were being treated by directors by fellow actors by male actors uh, no no I'll, I'll be honest no i didn't maybe it was maybe it was luck maybe it was favor i don't know but i didn't and most of the most of the productions in those days which is i think different from your generation now they were male Male producer, male director, yes, yeah, male dominated, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the theater companies, it was male, and so there were no female, there were no women who, who in charge, yeah, mm. yeah, no, no, who are behind the cameras or no, you know, absolutely yes, not. Um, and when I did TV, which is presenting, not anything to do with acting, in those days you were considered loose, mm -hmm. um, a prostitute. Because then you're out there on the screen, everybody, every man can see you. That means you're interested in all the men. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So mm. it was that kind of thing. And 
it, it was forbidden for young people, young girls to even mm -hmm. attempt mm -hmm. to go in that direction because you have things like night rehearsals and whatever. Mm -hmm. I was, I think I, I was blessed and lucky. The groups I was in, um, I worked with at Steam Line Charles and Michael, my were your senior yes. and whatever. I didn't have issues. I, I didn't have those issues and I didn't hear of them. Did you feel like these men, who are very upstanding men by the way, mm -hmm. did you feel like they were protecting you? Or was it no, just good I think times? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a loud mouth a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a very independent person. So maybe if they wanted to, they probably could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe they wouldn't. But I, I never felt intimidated. In fact, I remember the first time I directed, mm -hmm. um, besides at the university uh, project, it was in that group. And they asked me, they told me, we have a new play, would you like to direct it? Mm -hmm. So they gave you opportunities. Yes. They did not necessarily look at you as a woman. They looked mm. at you as a peer yes. in what you were doing. Yes, absolutely. I, I never experienced it, but I've heard of, of carpet interviews. I've heard of, you know... Hotel rooms. Hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. I've heard of that's the... Whatever the director's biscuit. That's what, but I didn't... <laughs> I didn't see it. We yes. call them biscuits. Yes. Wow. Biscuits. Them biscuits. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You, you still yeah. call them biscuits? We never call heard them of biscuits it. long time ago. Really? But yeah. Basically, a new another version of a, the teacher's blue eye. The pet the or the teacher's pet. pet. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, if you're asking about uh, directing, if I've felt anything in the gender roles or mm -hmm. gender issues, in, mm -hmm. I have felt it as a director, not as an actor. Okay. Once I step into a role of I am in charge, yes. something happens. Yes. Mm -hmm. I can't explain it, but something happens that you are... Mm -hmm. Women, I notice... We have brilliant ideas, but we need to. We want people to validate us a lot, right? Yes. We want to take it to everyone. What do you think? Oh, I think it's nice. Then you go to the. What do you think? Oh, a guy wakes up and is just like, "This is what I'm going to do," mm. and everyone's like, "Yo, you're the ish," mm. and the guy is the ish. Mm. But for us, even with such a brilliant idea, you still doubt yourself. You still question so many mm. things, and they can smell it. Okay. Once you walk into a room and you, you're supposed to be the director or the, 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 the producer of this project, they can smell fear, they can smell doubt, and they circle. They make you feel, they make you question yourself a lot. And yeah. yes, I have directed two films, and yes, I've experienced it. Like, you, you can't say something to a, a man that easily. Even a man that is, is like, let's say, a man that is like, let's say your um, assistant director, mm -hmm. you have to 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 start package, that it. package you your words package so it. you don't make him feel a certain type of way. But I think that's that sounds like it's a generational thing, like it's happening now, mm. because from Irene's experience, she does not, mm. you know, she's not experienced that. Do you think it's just because? Those were good times. We say the good old days. The good old days, but even today, maybe because they look at me as a mother with a gray hair and everything, that's so they can't, they can't, <laughs> yeah. you know. But I, I haven't, and like I say, maybe it's a character thing for me. I've always been me, so mm. it's it's difficult. It was even difficult to find find a husband. Oh really? Because I'm I'm bold. I'm out there. I you know I say what I want. I, I not what I want, but. You know, so yeah. I'm very direct. I'm, so I, I don't have, I, I, I haven't experienced what, what she has, yeah. uh, what she has gone through. So I, it's this, 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 can we sit, can we talk, blah, 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 can we do this, what do you, what do you think, blah, 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 and then it's... it's and, and from our conversation now, we, you know, we started off talking about theatre. But then I realized that we drifted <laughs> off into film, yeah. and then we've gone into direct. Yeah. So, <laughs> so does that then mean that as women in this in the industry, you've had to wear very many hats? It's not like you can concentrate on just being one thing. Is that what it means? Yeah. Um, for me, when I got into acting, the the end goal was to go behind the camera or to become the playwright oh. or to become the person that produced or made these stories because you cannot stay relevant for long mm -hmm. especially for women where you considered old 
like we age, we, 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 we have a shelf life, shelf life yes, yes, which is unfair, but it's a fact. So if right now we're living in the internet, if yes. you don't have a certain number of followers, they're just going to be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, some I'll people hire actually cast like, according yeah. to your followers on yes. social media. So yes. right now, that's such a that's big deal. That's the beginning, deal. even before the audition. Yeah. yeah. So I can't yeah. walk into a room and find a girl who has 20,000 followers. I have 3,000. And then I'm just like, I am a stereotype. And like, yeah. okay, okay, again. <laughs> like, are you an, you're not an, you're an influencer. <laughs> yes, you're not, like, what are you going to do I for the, the yeah. end goal of the... Uh, because you, know. you have to promote the work yes. on social media. Yes, so um, I feel that it's a, it's a thing that you we have to be aware of, okay, that I would encourage younger, younger uh, filmmakers or younger artists or younger um, theatre people who are interested in theatre and the creative and the art and storytelling, you have to have an end goal in mind that you can't only be on stage. Yeah. I, I got sick, I could not perform. I've not been able to perform in a, in a long time. So what happens then? Do you stop being the person you felt that your purpose is, which is to tell stories? Mm. So how, what do you do? You, you pivot. Yes. You become the playwright. You yes. pivot. You become the stage director. You pivot. You become the director. Mm -hmm. You find ways to stay relevant. Okay. You stay in people's faces and keep reminding people that you still have a purpose and you still have something to say. So as women, even better for us because you get to a place where you think you're not doing much mm -hmm. or you've not done enough yeah. or they're not listening you to you anymore. You start questioning yourself once yes. you get to a certain age. You yes. start asking yourself very important questions, yes. which you did not ask when you were younger. Exactly. Irene, do you feel like you asked, you had particular questions you asked yourself after you had moved into this corporate world mm -hmm. and you remembered your days of being an actress, an artist? Do you feel like you started asking questions that needed answers? Yes, I, I wanted more, the, one of the questions that I asked myself was that I wanted more themes, different themes from what was going on. Mm. In our days, there was a lot of HIV, HIV, you know, that come in and yeah. everything was HIV, HIV, HIV. I was thinking, okay, can we have something else? Can we talk about something? Can we have productions or uh, subjects, you know, different subject matters except, you know, that? Um, but then you, you raised a question um, earlier where you said, is that why we pivoted out? There's not enough work. I don't know about today, but there's not enough work if you're an actor yeah. or an actress mm. to sustain you. Yes. There's not, the projects are not that many. So you find yourself, like she said, you, you, you evolve. You're like, okay, okay, I can act, okay, I can direct. So I can act, I can direct, I can present, I can do this. So whichever comes, it's... I'll do that, I do that, mm. I do that, and mm. yeah, so to, st to stay afloat, to pay yeah. the bills. Mm. And on the question of relevance, do you feel like now that we're in a social media age, particularly, do you feel like relevance is something that you think about? I, th I just, from this interview, from what I've said, <laughs> now I understand why I'm not getting cold for anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you're so cute, you look nice on Instagram. You should have an Instagram page. We need to help you open one. Yes. Oh, I'm not on everything I'm on in WhatsApp and it's like limited. No, <laughs> And I don't think you have your picture as your DP, mm -hmm. like what we call a profile mm -hmm. picture. Is it your picture? I don't know where you are. I love nothing. Because, you know, in our age, mm. as I told you, in our age, those days, you know, the good old days. Like, yeah, like marketing yourself and whatever. It was like, you, you know, I'm uncomfortable. Up to today, I am. I, I find it hard to do it, but I admire people who do it. Mm -hmm. And yet when I think about, you know, legends, when I think about someone to call for a particular role, because what we are doing uh, with producing here at Timeless Arts is we're trying to make our productions very professional, which also requires being as authentic in casting as possible. Mm -hmm. To cast a, a lady of, you know, 50 as 50, 50. 50. Yeah. yeah, so cast a 50-year-old as a 50-year-old, yeah, that sort of thing. Mm. And you come to mind, mm. you know, but like you said, because you're not I'm out no there, <laughs> you have no <laughs> I am better myself. than you. Are you even on Instagram? They will uh, We are going to open your Instagram you. today. <laughs> 
we're going to open your Instagram because I mean anyway we could go on and on with this conversation but uh, what what would you say to a young lady out there um, who wants to enter this industry you said um, they should evolve they should learn to evolve yeah and for you you're re-examining things and you know seeing that things like social media are important and all that but what is that one thing i'll start with you okay. irene okay. what is that one thing that kept you in that time when you were very active in theater and acting that you would encourage a young lady to take on right now what i would encourage the young ladies or anyone else get into it aim to be the best mm -hmm. but it's work yeah i like what Esther is saying and uh, i haven't had a lot of that from actors she takes time to research and that's mm -hmm. why she gets so involved mm -hmm. in her characters that it's almost, you know, she carries yeah. them along. Yes. Most of our young people, sometimes when I'm directing or auditioning, they're not, they are actors, with, but they're not, they have no depth. Yes. They're just, you know, pouring lines out there. Yeah. But I don't feel you. I don't see what's unique about you. If you're going to uh, take up the role of a nurse, have you spent time in a health facility? You know, spend mm -hmm. a month there actually either mm -hmm. mentoring under somebody or actually doing that because that's the part you're going to play. Yeah. It needs to be believable. Yeah. But I feel um, they're not, they just, it's the look, mm -hmm. the lines, that's it. Yeah. But as a director, I want more. I want to be able to see what's different between you and another yeah. person. So it's hard work. Yeah. And they should not think it is for failures because that's the other thing. Ah, mm. uh, nursing a guy, and your hairdressing a guy. Impossible. <laughs> Imagine. They, they, they do that even parents. Yeah. So, you know, mm. No, it's not a Gezako thing. There's a mm. theory, there are degrees, people study these things. Yes. There's a science behind yes. it. So, uh, it's hard work. That, that's what they need to know. It's not just. So it's hard work, mm -hmm. ladies out there and anyone else still <laughs> who wants to pursue acting, pursue work in the creative field. It's hard work and it's not for failures and it requires depth. And as Terry said, you should be able to evolve. Mm -hmm. As Terry, do you want to add something else to yeah. that lady out there who yeah. wants to do something? I would like to encourage you as a young woman, a young man, but mostly the young woman, because I am a woman. Um, uh, explore theater before you go on screen. Mm. I know I've talked about this a lot, and it's like a, I'm a broken record, and young people don't want to hear it, because theater is not glamorous. Mm, yes. Theater is hard work. It's raw. It's months and months of rehearsals. It's like being on screen. Uh, in front of people and you will lose your lines and you are there alone. You are on that stage yes. alone. But I, I, that I feel is what, um, that's, that's what seasons you as, a, as, a, as an actor. Yeah. It makes you better because you're being pounded every day. You're in there, it's your body. The whole body is being used, it's not just the face. So when you get onto screen finally, it's not about is my wig perfect, are my nails, my nails perfect, do I have the perfect makeup? We should be open to playing anything also. Be open to playing anything. Without makeup. Yes. yes. Without, without yeah. especially yeah. roles without makeup. Yes. You should be actually proud when people see you off screen mm. or off stage and they're like, is that you? Yes. And you're like, yeah, 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 that's me. Because <laughs> you, you, tra you, 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 you are able to um, transform. Yes. Like, allow yourself to transform and don't think that the characters that you are given are you. You are being true to that character. You're yes. telling the story yes, of story. that yes. character. So if the person is a murderer, don't judge the character. Walk in and say, I have come to murder, you yes. know? What is the mind of a murderer? Like, understand what you're being given and don't judge and don't think a story has to be the one that walks in here. Yes, they're using my body, but no. Mm -hmm. You are telling the story of Irene, for example. So yeah. become Irene and stay true to her. And yeah, do theater, be open to it. It teaches a lot. Then maybe transition to screen. But if you can't and you get to screen, take time off to 
to to bear like remove yourself and become the character and then stop using your beauty as the yardstick mm. it fades yes you become irrelevant in mm. 10 years tops yeah. and there's a younger person so educate yourself um learn uh, learn about uh, other people other mm. actors mm. network yeah. be kind to fellow actors be kind to other actors yeah. when you're on screen with them don't be a diva don't treat people like they're lesser than yeah. they're just those human things that we need that sometimes we don't and hear and learn to take direction yes. and be led because yes. many people are losing out because they do not want yes. to take direction yes this has been such a seasoned conversation i feel like i have learned a lot so i hope you've written some notes <laughs> young ladies because there's so much wisdom that has been shared here and we are very excited to be facilitating such conversations here on timeless talk uh timeless arts we are producers theater producers right now and hopefully we will also evolve <laughs> into film you know <laughs> but we are very happy to be facilitating these conversations on the creative industry and celebrating women happy women's month and just say something quick to say bye and happy women's month acting is about give and take yeah, yeah. so for one to get the best actress award or best actor award it's the supporting character that yes. wants you yes. if they don't do a good job in giving you those lines mm. you are not going to give out your best so don't uh, just building upon what you're saying they all want to be The star is yes. How many lines are there? <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. No, that one I won't do. Mm. So, yeah. So, it's a, it's a give and take. Yeah. And whatever role you get jump mm. jump in. Yeah. I would like to say um stop waiting for people to validate you. Mm. Just do it. Mm. You want to do it? Just do it. What if you have to create what you're doing, create yes. it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stop waiting for people to say I think you're amazing. I think you can do this. I think the other person would see this if you believe it. That's it. Just do it. Amazing. Thank you so much ladies. It's I I I wish we could go on, but it's time for us to say bye to the people. And so happy women's month ladies. Happy women's month. And yeah, and let's hope that we all have an amazing year and maybe next year we'll check in and see yes. what progress we've made yes. from this point. Yes. Again, women's month. Yeah. <laughs> you know like on opera where they do where are they now? Yes. That that scared me a lot. Okay. With Queen of Katwe like where are they now? Why are you asking? <laughs> But may I say something yes. Karen this is something really great that you're doing. Thank you. I know you've talked about wanting to do something in art and yes. I'm just I see you and you just did it Thank you. and I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to continue our conversation behind <laughs> the scenes but from here from the ladies and I and timeless talk it's goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>